Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad you joined us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome. We're so glad to sit, have this time to sit and spend this time together to share the word. So thank you for taking the time. And I tell you what, the word will never disappoint us. It's our help. It's our answer. It is our freedom. Amen. And so we're thankful that you're joining us. Listen, bring your faith, release your faith, expect answers for your life today. We have a precious studio audience here and we're all hungry for the word like you are. And so uh, we want you to take notes. What does God say to you? Write it down. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about something, ministering along the line of something that God said to me a time back. And you know, in these episodes, I always talk about the different experiences um, that I walked through applying the word because um, I always end up using myself as an example. And sometimes I end up having to tell off on myself, right? Because to really teach people how to help them, you have to tell them where you missed it so you can see, tell them what they need to do that God dealt with you about to fix you so they can fix them. And it's a, it's an, I'd love to be able to tell about some of these people that are in here, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking about really something God dealt with me about, and I believe it'll be a help to you. Before we do that, I want to just read through. I'm going to look at reading through several scriptures. I'll note them, and uh, I don't know if you can find, it, find them in your Bible quick enough because I'm going to read through several at a time. But I'm going to look first at 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 34. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 34. It reads this, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Well, you know, can I tell you this? When you're reading the Bible and you read something like that, stop and do what it says. Don't just read it and go past it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. When you read that, just say, Father, I give you thanks. Amen. And then the rest of the verse tells us what we're to thank him for. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. So we could just stop right there and say, Oh, Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Well, this is what I'm going to be ministering on, his goodness and his mercy. And uh, we're going to see what it will work in us and for us because so much of our help Our help comes because he's good. Our help comes because he is merciful. He's not critical. He's not judgmental. He's he's merciful. Amen. Amen. I love the wording here in in Chronicles. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Look at this, for he is good. It doesn't just say that he does good. Good is who he is. So since he is good, he can't be anything but good in what he does. So know this, how how many times the world accuses God of the bad things that happen in this earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When there's natural disasters, people will call it an act of God. It's not an act of God. He didn't have anything to do with it. Anything that's not good, he's not participating in. Because he is good, only goodness can come from him. Um, how many times people have accused God with difficulties that they have faced, challenges, opposition that they've gone through, maybe tragedy that's happened in their life and they accuse God of letting that happen or causing that to happen or God not stepping in to stop something from happening. Mm -hmm. And um, in pastoring 25 years, I've heard different different people in their words, they they will basically 
uh, insinuate that God failed them yes. because of a certain event that happened in their life. Mm -hmm. Let's first of all look at some of, some of the difficulties that people face in life is because of how other people treated them. Right. And then they blame God because of how other people treated them. Uh, you know, if your neighbor didn't treat you well, I would hate for you to come and accuse me because your neighbor didn't treat you well. Right. I had nothing to do with that. Right. Well, even so, God, God gets blamed for something he had nothing to do right. with. Right. When yeah, people right. do bad things, wrong things, that didn't come because of God. That came right. because of yeah. their own will. Right. 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 So we have to make sure that we're not ever attributing to God mm -hmm. a fault that really falls right. on somebody who out of their own will did yes. something wrong. Yes. Yes. It's important that we never blame God for any wrongdoing, any hurt, any harm in our life yeah. because that will injure our faith. Yes. Right. Yeah. And many times people have grown up with certain religious phrases. Mm -hmm. Well, whatever will be, will be. Yeah. The, not, well, that's not scriptural, right. <laughs> you know, or God permitted that. God allowed that. God sent that. Well, you're going to have to find out if you're laying something on God, is it in line with the word or is right. it just in keeping yeah. with a religious phrase you grew up right. hearing? Right. We have to not be mindless about these yes. things yes. because many times people suffer disappointment and they'll connect God to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it will hinder their faith. And right. so many times we need to tweak our thinking, don't That's we? Right. Yes. Right. About these things that happen to us. Jesus said, um, Jesus said, he said, Satan comes to steal kill and destroy anything that robs us, steals, kills, destroys. God had nothing to do with it. Right. Satan is its source. And yes. if people are yielding to the devil, yielding themselves over to be used of the devil, God had nothing to do with that. Yes. Yes. People say, well, why didn't God stop it? Because we're not robots and God's not running us by some robotic method from heaven. Right. People ha are free will moral agents mm -hmm. and they do things that sometimes end up hurting someone else and God didn't have anything to do with that. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we're not blaming God for oh. events of our life, yes. for, for um, things that other people have done because if we don't deal with that, mm -hmm. what's going to happen, we're going to sometimes, if I could say it, it's almost like that wrong thinking will season the way we believe. Right. And there's an air of error yeah. in our thinking and it will hinder our faith. Yes. What do we know about God? He is good. Yes. And his Amen. mercy endures forever. Yes. Many people have gotten offended with God. They've gotten hurt toward God. Mm -hmm. They have carried a wrong way of thinking. And because of that, their faith is injured. Yes. Their faith yes. is weakened. Yes. We have to make sure we're addressing any wrong thinking that we're applying to God when he had nothing to do with yeah. certain things that, that may have happened in our lives. Mm -hmm. We know this, if it's not good, it didn't come from God. Right. Amen. Amen. And we need to bl lay the blame where it, where it goes. And that is on the devil. Yes. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And not only that, the devil seeks to use people. So if people yield to the devil, mm -hmm. then they can end up causing difficulty for people around them. And God had nothing to do with it. God didn't permit it. The people permitted it by who they chose to yield to. You know, we have to understand this. We can yield to God one moment and yield to the devil the next moment. Yeah. You said, no, I can't. Well, Peter did. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, the more we know the word, the more we know what not to yield to. Yeah. And the more we recognize that is the flow of God that yield to him and his flow and recognize what is not of his flow and don't yield to the wrong flow. Right. Peter, at one moment, got, Jesus made a, asked a question of his disciples and he said, who do men say that I am? And some said, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Moses, all these different ones. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered rightly. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. So he answered right. Yes. Yes. So what was it? And, and notice what Jesus said. He said, blessed out thou Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my God, my father, which is in heaven. Yes. So he's saying, you're yielding to God right now. When you said that, you received that revelation from God yes. and you were yielding to God in saying that. Yes. 
The next moment, Jesus begins to tell those same disciples of what's going to happen to him, that he's going to be arrested, he's going to be mistreated, he's going to be crucified. And what's Peter do? He takes Jesus aside and says, this shall not be, no, and and starts rebuking Jesus, thinking he's showing his love and affection. And what did Jesus do? He turned his back to him and said, get thou behind me, Satan. Notice this, one moment Peter yielded to God, the next moment he yielded to the devil. And Jesus recognized where both of those flows came from. We have to learn to recognize in our own lives where did certain things come from so we don't blame God for what people have done and for what the devil has done. And you say, well, God... God permitted them to do it. No, they chose to do it. And because we are free will moral agents, God will not violate our wills. He will not. He will only move invited. That's what our faith does. It invites God to move. So God will not move uninvited. Uh, But people can yield to the wrong flow. They can yield to wrong words. They can yield to wrong thoughts that end up injuring our life. But let's not associate that with God. God had nothing to do with that. So I just say to you right now, any hurt, any difficulty that has come because of an event or because of other people, don't connect God to that. You need your faith working right and you need to think right if your faith is going to work right. If you think God was somehow associated with any harm or evil doing or tragedy with your life, it will injure your faith toward him. And so what do we know about God? Let's go to the word and find out what God says. Let's find out how God moves and how God flows. And here in 1 Chronicles 16, 34 tells us a great a great reality and truth about God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why are we thanking him? The next phrase, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. There's two things that flow from God, goodness and mercy. And anything else that's not of goodness and mercy, God had nothing to do with. Amen. Amen. We need to start blaming the devil instead of blaming God for the things. Amen. Amen. Point to people that yielded to the devil and not yielding to God that brought harm. Amen. 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 And uh, thank God we find out he is good and only that which good, that that which is good comes from him. Amen. 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 Now in Psalm chapter 118, let's go over there. Psalm chapter 118. And I want to start reading in verse 1. It reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. So here we started with the same instruction of thanksgiving. Then it goes on, for he is good. This verse includes a word that the first Chronicles didn't include, and it's the word because. Mm -hmm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good because his mercy endureth forever. Mm -hmm. So what is it that makes him good? His mercy. Yes, right. He's good because of his mercy. Right. Amen. 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 You remember the woman who was caught in adultery and brought to Jesus. Mm-hmm. The religious leaders brought her to Jesus. They're really, they're not really interested in the outcome of her. They're trying to trap Jesus. Yes. And um, they're trying to get him to lose credibility in the eyes of the multitudes mm-hmm. and the people surrounding They're trying to pose hard questions that look like he couldn't win no matter what side he's on. Um, So they brought this adulterous woman and said, Moses said she ought to be stoned. What do you say about it? My question was, where's her partner? (laughs) Just wondering. Um, They just brought one guilty party. And uh, notice they said what do you say about this? Mm -hmm. And you know what he did? He went silent on them. Mm -hmm. They're critical, judgmental, loving to watch somebody, mm, if I could say this, just seeing seeing what's going to happen on this one. They're standing back to watch Mm -hmm. somebody's downfall. Mm -hmm. And he met their criticism. He met their judgmental uh, attitude with silence. Yeah. He didn't say anything. I believe what's he doing? He's listening. Mm-hmm. He's listening to the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Listen, 
We need the gift of the, we need the Holy Ghost. That, what a gift it is to us to have the greater one on the inside of us that when we don't know what's the proper answer, don't just say anything. Go quiet and listen. Yes. Jesus went quiet. No doubt he's listening. The Bible said he stooped down and he just wrote in the dirt. At a time of a, looks like a woman's judgment of life or death. This is a critical thing because they have command of Old Testament just to go ahead and stone her, but they want to find out what does Jesus say about it. Can I say, say it to you this way? What does mercy say about it? Because he is merciful. So Jesus just writes in the dirt. He just starts writing. I've heard different things that uh, what people said that he was writing in the dirt. I'm not really going to go there because I don't have, I don't, I haven't studied that enough to know, but I know this. He took time. Right. He right. took time to hear. Yes. Don't be so quick to criticize. You don't mm-hmm. know what has happened to people in their lives. Yes. Dad Hagen, who is our spiritual father for decades, he said, um, Don't be so quick to be critical of people until you've walked a mile in their shoes. You don't know what people have gone through. And he said, and you find out, you might think they're not doing very good at at the steps they're making, but you might have even done worse if you were in their place. So we need to learn to be merciful. Now, don't misunderstand me. Mercy doesn't mean permissive towards wrongdoing. Get that straight just being permissive towards wrongdoing. Um, Because when Jesus responded, he had written in the dirt and one by one, starting with the oldest, they walked away from that crowd that brought her, that woman caught in adultery. They were there to see what's going to happen to her. And one by one, they walked off until nobody else was standing there. And Jesus turned to the woman. He said, woman, where are your accusers? And she said, there's none here. They've left. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Mm-hmm. Notice this. Did she do wrong? Yes. Mm-hmm. He corrected her. Yes. Go and sin no more. Yes. So he was not winking at sin. He was telling her how to not go back to that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Don't go sin anymore. Mm-hmm. Meaning this, you can't just on purpose keep sinning, sinning, sinning. Yes, yes right. his right. mercy will meet us, but we can't presume upon the mercies of God and just live any way we want. Right. He didn't tell her. He didn't just say, neither do I condemn you. God bless you. No, he gave her something to come up to. He gave her a command. He expected her, go and sin no more. Don't keep doing this. I've I've given you mercy, but don't keep doing this. Amen. Well, just because he gives us mercy, it's not him uh, being permissive toward us to keep doing the wrong thing. When we repent, you know the word repent means to make a change. Mm -hmm. We change. So when he forgives us, it's not so we can keep doing wrong and be mindless about it. It's so that we have space to make a change. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's of his goodness. That is of his mercy. When he gives us space to repent, Uh when he gives us space to make a change, just because nothing nothing judgmental happened the first time, don't think that we don't need to make a change. I mean... In his goodness, he shows us what needs to change in our lives. And that is him being good to us. Amen. You know what the word says? Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Why? Correction is a flow of his love, not a flow of judgment. It's a flow of love. Whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Why? He shows you what to do so that you don't keep doing the wrong thing that keeps injuring your life. Listen, it's not what we're doing right that hurts our lives. It's what we're doing wrong. And in his love and his goodness and his mercy to us, he will show us and deal with us about where we're missing it. Right. 
-hmm. Why? Because he doesn't want us to keep injuring our lives by keep doing right. wrong. Yes. Right. So it's his goodness that points to what we need to correct. Mm -hmm. He's not pointing that out in criticism. Mm -hmm. He's right. pointing it out in mercy yes. and in his goodness so yes. that you don't keep tripping over something. Yes. You know, if you had a person who was blind, they had no sight and there was something in their path that they keep tripping over, wouldn't it be of your goodness to say, hey, there's a board there. Uh -huh. yes. If you will step over that, you won't keep tripping. Well, see, that's good for you to let somebody know that. Yes. You're not pointing to their blindness. You're pointing to them not tripping again. Right. 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 Well, even so, God shows us what's tripping us up. Uh -huh. Now, have you ever noticed this? God is bringing us into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Mm -hmm. Meaning this, Jesus is our goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that he's, he's, God is endeavoring to bring us up to the place because Jesus was our example of how someone who's right with God mm -hmm. and filled with the Holy Ghost can live. Mm -hmm. Jesus' life was an example of that. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is our example of what our life can look like mm -hmm. if we will live in line with the word be a doer of the word and follow the word and the Holy Spirit, live full of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So Jesus is our example of what our life is to look like. And let me tell you what, uh, don't say, well, I'm, I'm not Jesus. I can never reach it. You have the same thing. He has the right. word and the spirit. That's, right. yes. That's what he had. We yes. have the word and the spirit yes. and the Holy Spirit is our divine tutor. Yes. He is our divine teacher, our mm -hmm. helper, our guide, and he will guide us out of the things that bring injury to our life mm -hmm. to bring us into things that bring blessing into our life. Yes. So the Holy Spirit will deal with us. Mm -hmm. Quit doing this. Mm -hmm. Set this aside. Sure. Don't do this anymore. It's mm -hmm. not because he's trying to push us down and point to faults and failures. He's trying to put us in the path that we have nothing but good that meets us instead of difficulties right. because we're making wrong choices. Right. Because God loves us and he is ever bringing us into the fullness of the stature of Christ to where I, our life looks like his, mm -hmm. he's going to always be dealing with us. For the rest of your life, he's going to deal with you about something to change, yes. about yes. something to correct. Yes. That's of his goodness and that's of his mercy. Mm -hmm. And if we will make the corrections, if we will make the changes, you know what will happen? We'll end up, our faith will work. Mm -hmm. It will work unhindered. Yes. It's what we're doing wrong that hinders our faith from working as yes. it ought. Yes. So as we deal with and implement the corrections that God deals with us about, mm -hmm. our faith will flourish. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be able to receive without hindrance yes. from God. Amen. Amen. Listen, when you need to receive a miracle, you need to receive a healing. We need to find out what is there that's in my way that's tripping me up. Sometimes what's tripping up some people is they're blaming God. Mm -hmm. yes. That's tripping up some people. Uh -huh. They're blaming God for not being good to them. They're blaming God for the, the difficult things that have happened in their past. Yes. When, the, when the source of any difficulty, of any harm, of any tragedy came from Satan. Right. That's right. That's right. And they're accusing God of Satan's actions. Yes. Yes. And uh, that'll hurt your faith. Yes. And we have to know this, God is good yes. and he's yes. only ever good. And anytime yes. God corrects us, because God will correct us, yes. but he doesn't correct with tragedy. Right. Right. He doesn't correct by stealing, killing, destroying. He doesn't correct with, with right. difficult things. He corrects by his word. Yes. The Holy Spirit will deal with us in words. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He'll speak to us. Deal with that. Mm -hmm. right. Implement yes. this in your life. Uh -huh. Remove that from your life. Yes. Yes. God corrects through his word. He doesn't correct through tragedy. He's not correcting you by making you sick. Right. Yes. Right. He's not correcting by making your children sick, That's by right. keeping yes. you broke. He's oh, yes. not using those, those tools. Uh -huh. Now, if something tragic happens, can you learn something from it? Sure. Yes. But that wasn't God teaching you that right. through right. that tragedy. Right. Right. There's, there's things that sometimes that we see, hey, I could have done better. That's right. yes. But God's not associated with anything that steals, kills, or destroys. Jesus said, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. 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 So we have to learn to recognize, what am I accusing God of? Sometimes it's even in the back of your mind. Yeah. Can I say it that way? Yeah. Sometimes there's just a hint mm -hmm. 
-hmm. or a, it, it's coloring the way you're thinking by yeah. blaming God mm -hmm. with something unjustly. Mm -hmm. um, but God will certainly tell us what to correct, mm -hmm. yes. but he does it in a way that lifts us, yes. not yes. in a way that pushes yes. us down. Yes. Yes. For the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. God is going to be dealing with us about something to correct. Never get tired of the correction that That's comes right. from God right. because right. it's always to bring us into more yes. so that we can advance spiritually, mm -hmm. so that we can grow up yes. spiritually yes. as we make those changes. And uh, to a hungry man, every bitter thing tastes good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know this, when you're hungry for God, even if you, if, if he points to you something that, if I could say this almost, ah, oh, that stung. <laughs> when he pointed at that, oh, I know, I know that's something I've been holding to. I need to deal with that. You're grateful that he pointed to that when you're hungry. We don't want to hide something that we know isn't right in our lives. We don't want to hide because, listen, you can't hide it from God, but some people kind of protect that. And if the pastor preaches on a sermon that deals with that, and they'll get offended because they're hiding that, That's you know? Good. No, it's, it's God's goodness that will help us to see what needs to be corrected because he wants us to receive all that he's provided for us. God is good and he can't be anything but good and nothing but goodness can flow from him because when you're good, bad has no flow out of goodness. Amen. And so we, if I could say this, we need to begin no matter what happens, no matter what circumstances that the enemy may launch against us, say, God, I know this, you're good. Yes. And in your goodness is my help. That's yes. right. Amen. Amen. Remember these two passages of scripture we looked at in 1 Chronicles 16, Psalms chapter 118. What were the first phrases? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. What are we to thank him for? God, you're good. Yes. God, you're yes. merciful. Yes. Thank you for your goodness. Yes. Thank you yes. for your mercy. Yes. Even when my life may be facing yes. something difficult, if I'll be thankful and praise him yes. for his goodness, yes. goodness will get the upper hand. Right. If I'll praise him for his mercy in the face of difficult circumstances, mercy will get the upper hand yes. over opposing circumstances yes. and will overcome yes. them. Amen. Your victory begins with thanking God for his goodness and his mercy. So out of your own mouth, thank him for his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Well, you don't want to miss upcoming episodes. We're going to keep teaching this direction. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. We cannot live the life God authored for us without His power. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.